All right, all right. I hope I don't blank out this time. I hope I don't blank out this time. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Y'all back, y'all back, y'all back, y'all back. Y'all back. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Swipe and invite, swipe and invite, swipe and invite. I just hope it don't cut off on me again. This, this swipe and invite, swipe and invite. I, this is going to be something good right here. This is going to be something good. It's going to be something good. And I'm going to get right back into it. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Shiny. That's my sister, Shiny. Um, Elijah had said to, uh, Elisha had said to Elijah, please let me inherit a devil's share of your spirit and become your successor. Father God, you have to help me in Jesus' name. And I was, as I was reading this story, in the, in the book of 2 Kings chapter 2, and Bishop was just talking about this yesterday. And obviously, I don't know if he knew what I was going to speak about today. But uh, this happened right after Elijah was, uh, right before Elijah was taken up to heaven. But before Elisha had uh, told Elijah that he wanted a double portion, I was reading in the scripture that Elisha was following Elijah. And, you know, Elijah said, you just go ahead and on. He said, no, I'm going to stick on close to you. I'm going to stick close to you. All of us are hungry for things of God. All of us are hungry for things of God. And many of us have come to a place where we refuse to tolerate what we did last year. When you get hungry for what God is about to do in your life, you will never tolerate what you did last year. You see, God is a God of transition, and when he shifts, we must, uh, uh, when God shifts, we must be in position to receive what he has for our lives. You know, you can't even, when God shifts, you have to shift as well. Uh, what I'm going to talk about today is positioning. I may not be able to finish all of this, so just declare this one right here as a part one. As we see in the story, Elijah was aware he was about to transition. Elijah already know he about to transition out of this uh, place. So Elisha uh, was Elijah's training and he followed him. See, Elisha, he followed the, the anointing of God. He followed him. Elisha asked Elijah for something very interesting. He asked he asked the man of God, he asked the prophet, he asked him of something that was very interesting. Elisha said he had seen God do some amazing things in the time that he had been following Elijah. So he had seen Elijah's God call down fire from heaven. He had seen Elijah's God call down fire from heaven and, 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 uh, uh, and stop the rain. He's seen all these things. He's seen a miraculous word to the God who Elijah was serving. So he's like, man, I want to do the same thing. God has done amazing things for Elijah. I'm going to stop that right there. That name right there in itself, Jezebel. Uh, God had done amazing things for Elijah, but Elisha wanted before all. Uh, but what Elisha wanted before Elijah's transition was for God to give him a double portion of Elijah's anointing. Okay? He wanted a double portion of what he seen God do in Elijah's life. He wanted it. He wanted it. He's like, man, I need to get some of this. I need to get some of this in Norton. So, 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 so what happened? What happened? What happened? So, this year where God is taking you is uh, going to take an unusual anointing. What, where God is taking you this year, because the year we still we just in the month of April, it's going to require. It's going to be some unusual. It's going to take an unusual anointing this year. God is requiring a double portion of His anointing on your life. You see, people, uh, pe you know, people don't see you. People don't see you. People don't see you. Instead, they see God's power on you. You know, where God is taking you is going to require double. It's going to be double for your trouble. Where it's taking you is going to be double. So God will never bless you with something that will make you where you can't live without him. 
Okay? He, 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 he's not going to do it. We are not playing. We, You know, let me tell you something. I ain't playing this year. I ain't playing this year. But we need God to give us every single thing that he has for my life, for your life. You know, this year we want a double. We want a double. We want a double blessing. And in order to have a double blessing, we have to have a double anointing. I don't know about you, but I know... Uh, once I came in contact with, with my bishop, with Bishop Blake, Bishop R.C. Blake, because I was at, a, at another church and I, and, and I seen a man of God. He never knew me. He never knew me from uh, day one. But I, I knew of him. And when I saw him, I'm like, man, I, I desire that. You know, so I'm going to follow this man of God. So I started following Bishop R.C. Blake on Periscope, listening to him. I knew of him. I knew of him. Matter of fact, I had first joined the church in 1987 as a little boy. I had five, I, I, I remember walking down the aisle with the prophet, with the dad, R.C. Blake Sr. But I was in the world then. So here I am, probably like, what, 30? <laughs> Wait, Lord, I'm getting old. Like 29, 30 years later, you know, that I'm like, I'm back to the place where I once, where I really was supposed to be at. So, 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 so what is going on? What is going on? A spiritual request. Elisha wanted a double portion of what Elijah had because he's seen a man of God perform a miraculous work. He's seen the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob uh, do mighty, wonderful things in the life of their people. As a matter of fact, be right before they got to the place, before he asked for a double anointing, they, uh, he saw Elijah's staff hit the wall and the water split that they was able to walk through. They was able to walk through. It said, the scripture in verse 9 said, when they came to the other side, Elijah said to Elisha, to Elisha, tell me what I can do for you before I am taken away. See, you got you got to watch this. You got to watch this. This was a spiritual request that Elisha had wanted of the man of God who he he he, he so uh, uh uh he 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 followed. He followed, he followed, he followed. That's why I remember uh, a week ago or two, I was talking about uh spoke on undergirding your pastor, undergirding your pray for the man of God. You know, you gotta always pray for your pastors, you gotta pray for your bishop, you gotta pray for this stuff. So Elisha, Elisha is making a spiritual spiritual request. Elisha, he wants a double portion of Elijah's spirit. A double portion of Elijah's spirit. That's in 2 Kings chapter 2 and 9. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Let me tell you something. He got a double portion. It's like spiritual spiritual fathers and sons, just like physical father uh, and the sons. As a father, you always want your son to be better than what it is that you are doing. You always want your father, your son to do better than what you are doing. So Elijah was doing one thing, but his spiritual son had done double and what he did. See, Elisha is asking for something that prophetically God had spoken to Elijah about before. That happened, in, 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 if you go back, in 1 Kings chapter 19 and 16, it says, And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shalt thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abimahola, uh, 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 or uh, you know how these words is in the Bible, Shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room? This was prophecy that explained that Elisha would be, uh, one day be anointed king. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 17. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he had. For he is the beginning of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. Come on now follow me, follow me. The law of Deuteronomy says the first son should be the one that receives the double portion in blessing. Okay, Elisha is not Elijah's son, but Elisha is asking God to give him something that breaks protocol. In, order, in other words, when there is prophecy over your life, 
When there is prophecy over your life, it exceeds protocol. I hope I'm helping somebody. I hope I'm helping somebody today. When there is when when, when, when there is prophecy, I'm gonna say that one more time. When there is prophecy over your life, when there is prophecy over your life, it uh, it exceeds protocol. By right, by right, by right, there are people that should be next in line to receive. By right, there should be people next in line to receive something. But with prophecy over your life, God will bump you up in the line and make people, uh, 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 and, and make people will wonder why they didn't get the blessing instead of you. Come on, somebody. It is because it is your time. When it's your time, can't no devil in hell get what God has for you. I'm hoping I'm helping somebody today. I'm going to say that one more time because that sound is so good. Uh, Elisha, Elisha is not Elijah's son. Okay, let's get that. Let's get that. When you go back, you can go back and read that. Elisha is not Elijah's son, but Elisha is asking God to give him something that breaks protocol. So, in other words, when there is prophecy over your life, it exceeds protocol. Prophecy exceeds protocol. By right, there are people that should be next in line and to receive something. But with prophecy over your life, God will bump you up in the line and make people uh, uh, well, and have people wonder why they didn't get the blessing instead of you. It is because it is your time. It is your time. When it's your time, can no devil in hell stop it? I feel like preaching today. I feel like preaching today. Boy, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to be a part two. I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to do a part two. I'm gonna have to do a part two. So when you ask for a double portion, know what you have asked for. Elisha noticed some things about Elijah's life. You see, you got to know some things about the man of God who, who, who God has placed in your life. There is a spirit of faith. Okay? This season, God wants folk walking in faith rather than in fear. You can't walk around doubting God's word. You got to have the faith to keep pressing through. I'm hoping I'm helping somebody this morning. There is. There is. Hold up. Ah. There is a spirit of obedience. Obey God, even when the command doesn't make sense. God says something, you got to obey, you got to obey no matter what. Elijah obeyed God even when it didn't make sense, okay? Obedience is better than sacrifice. You can't expect God to bless you if you are going to do your own thing. Come on, somebody. We have to be willing to go. We have to be willing to go where God wants us to go, where uh, 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 where God wants to go. Be who he wants us to be and go where he wants us to go, okay? That's what you got to do. You, that's what you got to do. That's the spirit of obedience. You got to be obedient no matter what it is. There is a spirit of coverage. There is a spirit of coverage. Elijah was a strong man of God who stood against those that wanted to kill the prophets, Cause they got those they wanted to kill the men of God, you know. This this a lot of this stuff was going on during the Reformation period. They wanted to kill a man of God. They wanted so so Elijah was a strong man who stood against those who wanted to kill a prophet. God needs people that are not going to run, but know that they are more than conqueror through Him that love us. Let me tell you something. God needs people that know that God has their back. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. What Elisha had asked for is so significant, it had character tied to it. You understand? Know it's 1021. It's 1021. I, I got no oh, hope. Oh, I, I can't stop. Wait a minute. I can't stop. I can't stop. This is some good stuff. Elisha has not asked for the double anointing. He has not asked for the double anointing because he wants wealth or possession. You know, many times we want something. We want to get ahead in life because we want to uh, uh, so-called shine down on the rest of them. You know what I'm saying? We want to get the, the nice clothes, the nice cars and all this stuff here in order for we can, we can look down on the other people like, man, I got this, I got that. But let me tell you something. Elisha had not asked for the double anointing because he wants wealth or possession. He didn't act for it. He didn't. Instead, he was asking that he be more controlled by the Spirit of God. 
Where God is about to take us will require greater power. You know, uh, we can't be uh, codependent on people expecting them to do what God anointed us to do for ourselves. That's just like Solomon. Solomon, he said, what, uh, God's like, what you want? What you want? He said, you know what? I pray for wisdom in order to lead your people. He said, because you have asked for wisdom, everything else I'm going to give to you. Okay? Okay? That's some good stuff right there. Where God has appointed you, he has anointed you. Where God has appointed you, he has anointed you. When you ask for this anointing, you can pray over your own house and not wait for your pastor to do. I hope that I don't, I don't want that to go over your head. I don't want that to go over your head. Where God has appointed you, he has anointed you. When you ask for this anointing, you can pray over your own house and, and not wait on your pastor to do it. You can cast out demons for yourself and you will walk on your job and say, devil, we aren't going to have this mess this year. When, 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 when God has appointed you, he has anointed you. You ain't got to worry about, hey, pastor, I need for you to pray for me, pastor. My children are going to they, they, this pure hell. I, I got these devils in my house. You got the power to do it yourself. You have the power. It's all good. It's all good to go to the man of God and ask him. But when you are called, when you are called, you're, you're anointed, you're appointed. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Many of us ask for things under the wrong motivation. The condition of, you know, the condition of his uh, request. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. There are conditions tied to this type of request. Because Elisha said, you know what, Lord, I need, I need a double portion of whatever. I mean, Elijah, I need a double portion of what this is that you have for me. And he said, thou had asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken up from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. We must understand the process. Elisha would only get his promise if he witnessed Elijah's transition. The blessing of the Lord will res be reserved for people that can endure the process. See, it's a process that you got to go through. You ain't going to start off on top of the mountain. You're going to have to go through the valley first. I'm hoping that was somebody first. Elisha will be taken through the process, but it is just a test. God will present you with options to see if you will take the option or continue with the process. The option will really be a cop-out or a place of comfort. I hope I'm helping somebody. You can take the option or you can continue with the process. So what you going to do? What you going to do? Are you going to continue with the process or are you going to take the option? This ain't family feud. This ain't all oh, what it is. The price is, price is right. It ain't the price is right. You want this door, that door, that door, that door. So you really going to rather take the option A, B, C, or D or you going to go through the process. You gotta go through the you gotta go through the fire in order to get purified. Come on, somebody. You gotta go through it. You gotta go through it. Come on, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, I, let me tell you something. I'm, I got I know it, I know it's hard. I know it's hard. He never promised that the uh, cross would not get heavy. He never promised that the hill would be hard to climb. He never offered us a gift without fighting, but he promised that help would always be on time. Come on, somebody. Opposition didn't shake his resolve. Opposition would not shake us. Second King 2 and 3 says, And the sons of the prophets that were with Bethel came forth to Elisha and said to him, Knowest thou that the Lord would take away your master? Knowest thou that the Lord would take away the master from thy head today? And he said, Yeah, I know it. Hold your peace. You know, uh, uh, this year you are going to have to uh, tell people, you're going to have to tell a whole lot of people to shut up. Because whenever you are seeking something from God, you will always have people who will discourage you and tell you that your journey is in vain. Come on, somebody. If you know what you are at to stop allowing them to speak negativity into your life, you must tell them politely, you know what, peace be still, shut up. Because cause, cause, let me tell you something, the haters going to come, they're going to see, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? I have... A family member of mine told me, why are you going to Bible school? Why are you going to the seminary? Why are you going there? You can worry about, you can learn the, all you need is the Bible. I, and this is what I told, I said, look, why do we go to school and have to learn math, English, science, social studies, and all that? We don't go to school to learn one subject. You need everything holistically. Yes, 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 we have the Bible, we have the Bible, but they have a lot of other books that you have to enhance, whatever it is, you have to enhance your skills. 
Of course, I've read the Bible and read it a million times, but at the same time, I need more, Lord. I need more. I need to know more. I need to know the history of all, where all this came from. I need to know. I need to know the, dip, the many genealogies and, and, and everything. I need to know everything that there is about you. I need to know what happened. I need to know the philosophy, the Greek philosophy. I need to know about all the kingdoms. I need to know about your covenant, Lord. I need to know about the antiquities of the Jews. I need to know all this stuff here. I need to know why Elijah did what he did, why he was called. Who was it? Who was that? I need to know. That's why it's very important when we read our Bibles, all those begot, this one begot, that one, that one begot, that, all that for a reason. It's not there for nothing. We, it's a, gene, a generation. We have to know that for a reason. Opportunities cannot shake you. Second Kings chapter two verse one and two says, "And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went uh, with Elisha from Gilgal, 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 whatever. And Elijah said to Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel.' And Elisha said to him, As the Lord liveth, and, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. I will not leave thee. So." Let me tell you something. Many times we we will be good afternoon. Many times we will be implanted in different churches or wherever. And it uh, can be gone somewhere, but at the same time we get in our feelings and, and be shifted somewhere else. So many of many times we move when we wasn't supposed to move. Let me tell you something. He said, he said, uh uh Elijah and, and, and went with Elisha to from Gaza. Gilgal. Hey, praise the Lord. Thank you, Brazil. Gilgal was the place of beginning. This was the place where the Israelites first celebrated the promised land, the Passover, and the new birth that occurred in the wilderness. Come here, you go. That, that's why I go to Bible college, to the seminary, because I need to know about all this stuff here. I need to know, I need to go all the way back to the book of Genesis. I need to go all the way back there. Gilgal was the place where the Israelites first celebrated the promised land, and they had left out of Egypt, the Passover, and the new births that occurred in the wilderness. It was a place of new beginnings. It is the place where you can get stuck at what is. Oh, I, that probably missed somebody. It is the place where you can get stuck at what is. Many people come to the place of Gago and it becomes the place of what is. It is a comfort zone. It is where you can develop the spirit that says, this is the way I have always done it. God says to us, just like Elijah, you can stay here, but I'm going somewhere else. Come on, somebody. You can stay in this place. You can stay in this place. You can get comfortable with where you're at. You can get comfortable with where you're at. But let me tell you something. It's time to move on. That's a shifting. That's a shifting taking place. It's all right. It's all good with where I'm at. But that's a shifting taking place because I got to uh, move forward and press on towards the mark of the high color, which is in Jesus Christ. They kept going to Bethel. Second Kings chapter 2 verse 3 and 4 says, And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord would take away thy master from thy head? And he said, Yeah, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said to him, Elisha, tarry here. I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord living and as thy soul living, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. Elijah told Elisha to stay because he had to go to Jericho. Elisha uh, is after anointing of Elijah, so he decides to keep going. Bethel is the, is the, uh, represents the place of dreams. Bethel represents the place of dream. Bethel is where Jacob met God and dreamed of angels descending and ascending from heaven. Many of us get stuck there. We get stuck there. We get stuck in our dreams. Many, many of us get stuck in our dreams. Bethel is where Jacob met God. Bethel is the place where we get stuck in our dreams. Bethel is where Jacob met God and, uh, and dream of angels descending and descending from heaven. Many of us get stuck there because Bethel is the place where we catch a vision. We, we get the vision, but we stay stuck right in the same place. The problem is, many of us will catch the vision, in the name of Jesus. The problem is, many of us will catch the vision, and we will never move to make the dream come true. Make your dreams a reality. It is the place where we get stuck at could be. In other words, in other words we just stay there 
And we are dreaming about doing a thing, but never producing anything. We're dreaming about a thing, but never producing anything. We are not going to stay and could at or could be. We can't stay in a could be situation. If we had, if we had manifested what we could have last year, we would have produced something. We are moving to something else. Hope I'm helping somebody today. Hope I'm helping somebody today. Let me see how how, how much more. Oh man, I'm looking at this. This is this is good now. Oh, uh, I, I I you know I'm looking at the time, but it's it's, it's y'all want me to finish? Y'all want me to finish? Y'all want me to finish? If you want me to finish this 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 tap the horse, tap the horse, and all right, all right, all right, okay, okay, okay. Now they make it to Jericho. Elijah and Elisha make it to Jericho. They make it to Jericho. Second Kings chapter two verse five. Second Kings chapter two verse five it says, and the sons of the prophets that were uh, at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord would take away the master from thy head today? You you notice how they keep coming to him, man? They about to take your daddy away. They about to take him away. Yeah, I know it. I know it. I know it. I know all of this stuff. I know all this stuff. The people were saying to Elisha, "Are you still going to be with this old man?" And Elisha again is telling them to be quiet. Elijah again asks Elisha to stay behind. And by now we ought to know uh, that this is a test. Every time he said, man, I need you to stay here. He like, no, I ain't going to stay here. I ain't staying here. So by now we know this is a test. Everywhere that they go, Elisha is asking to stay behind, but he refuses. Jericho is the place of past victories. This was the place where Israel had their first military victory. The walls of Jericho, Joshua 6. For many of us, this is the place where we begin to reminisce on past victories. This is the place where we get stuck at what once was. I remember when I, I was over there, I did this, I did that. We remember how things used to be. Know that if God did it then, he can do it now. God is doing something new and we have to get out of yesterday and move on with the process. Okay? Let me tell you something. Obstacles. Oh, all right, I'm going to read that. <clears throat> Left Jericho, went to Gago, Bethel, Jericho. Uh, now they came to the Jordan. Now they came to the Jordan, 2 Kings uh, 2 and 7. When 50 men, first you got this one to come in, then you got that one coming. Now you got a whole group, a whole group. Let me tell you something. Every time you're doing something, you're going to always have opposition. Even people who's close to you are going to come around. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Now in verse 7, it says you got a group of 50 men coming on. And 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood up in view. Are far off, and they too stood by the Jordan. Jordan is the place of death. They stood back because the river Jordan represented the boundary to the promised land. If they crossed it, would enter. Elijah would face death. Some of us come to the Jordan, and it is the barrier between self life and spiritual life. Jordan represents not getting stuck at what should be. Hold up. I, mean, I don't want to mess up. Join this play where we get uh, not get stuck up at what, what should be. Where I'm at. Where I'm at. Because I'm, I'm, I'm all up. I'm, I'm, I'm all up. I'm all over. I'm all over. All right. All right. All right. We are not supposed to sit back thinking about what we should have done or could have done. We can't allow opportunities to cause us to miss what God has for our life. We have to push through the barriers. I'm, re I'm, I'm reading, all, I'm, I'm looking at my notes. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Obstacles will not shake his resolve. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. Elisha managed a sovereign response in 2 Kings 2 and 10. And says, thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I'm taken up from thee, it shall be unto thee 
but if not, it shall not be so. Elisha says he wants a double portion of the anointing that Elijah had. Some of us have come so far, quitting is not an option. Elijah teaches us that if you are still standing here, when this transition goes down, you will get what you asked for. And if you get weary, you are not going to get it. Can I be honest? I'm in the... Uh, Trying to get my, I'm, I'm in the process of receiving my Masters of Arts in Christian Education. And let me tell you something. I've been in, going to school for the past six years. Past six years. That's out of the eight years I've been home since being released from doing 10 years in the penitentiary. Past six years, first time I went to barber school. I had to get, I had to stay in there a year to get my barber license. Then I had to go back and, uh, and start at another school to retake some remedial courses. Then I had to go to Southern University, then get my Bachelor of Arts in uh, Psychology. Now I'm in the process of getting this master. So I, for the past six years, I've been in school. I have five classes left, and the devil been on me. Man, you, and, and let me tell you, it's overwhelming because I got papers to write every week. Every week I got a six, seven, eight page paper to do outside of running the, running the business, outside of dealing with the house, outside of ministry, all this stuff. And I'm doing these papers and also writing a book. So it gets overwhelming. I'm like, you know what, man, I can't give up. Quitting is not an option for me because what I do is not for me. It's for everybody else. How many young men, and I'm going to speak on how many African-American men we know are locked up in a penal institution who have been through hell and high water. Get in prison, go to prison, get out of prison. Go to prison, get out of prison. Reason why they get out and, and go back to the same old things because they don't recognize who they was. Descendants of kings and queens. So quitting for me is not an option. Self-actualization is overcoming your obstacles by any means necessary. That's one of my greatest uh, psychologists, Abraham Maslow. But beyond the top of the pyramid of self-actualization is transcendence. My life is not about me. It's about pouring into others in order to help them get up. Not like having a crab in a bucket syndrome. If, I, if every time another man get up, I pull them back down. No, it's not about that. This, look, look what happened. Second Kings 2 and 11 says, And it came to pass, and as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. What happened? It was what was promised in verse 1. Here we are, uh, we right in the month of April. We're in the month of April. And, 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 and let me tell you something. I believe we're in a, a year of, this is a year of shifting. God is, a, is doing some things. He is shifting some things in the life. Everything that transpired last year, we are in the new year where a shifting is taking place. A shifting is taking place in the atmosphere. Elisha. Because of his perseverance in following the man of God, he received the mantle. Second Kings chapter 2 and 12 says, And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in pieces. He cried, My father. He is talking about his spiritual father, Elijah, in this scripture. After not seeing Elijah no more, Elijah's transition, Elisha tore his clothes off. We got to rip some old stuff off because we are about to change some garments. You got to rip off sadness. You got to rip off uh, 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 old trifling uh, mentality. God is about to give you another matter. You got to rip off some old stuff. 
You can't, you can't carry on or out the rest of this year with the same mentality as you had in 2015. It's 2016. We're in the fourth month. You got to rip some of that old stuff off. E Elijah tore his clothes off and received the mantle from his spiritual father. The same power, the same power that was, uh, uh, e that was on Elijah fell on Elisha. It wasn't the same anointing. It was a double portion of Elijah's anointing. Elisha had a chance to get out, but he kept going. Through Bethel, through Jericho, through Jordan, and through Gigal, Elisha refused to stay behind. He kept going. When people asked why Elisha kept doing this, he told them to shut up because he was headed towards something great. Like Elisha, we want a double portion. Elisha crossed over and never saw of death. Uh, 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 God made a separation so the haters had to stay on the other side. You see, y'all missed that. Y'all missed that when you go back and read. When they, when they got over to the Jordan, the, the water stood, uh, separated. Elijah, Elijah hit the water and it separated and went through. Closed up. The haters was on the other side. Let me tell you something. Your haters weren't going to be left behind while God is, while you getting what it is that God have for you. Let me tell you something. This is the year Elisha called on the God of Elijah. Second Kings chapter 2 13 says he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell on him and went back and stood up on the bank of the Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the water, they parted hither and tighter. And Elisha went over. Guess who saw Elisha uh, saw? Guess what? Guess, guess, guess who Elisha saw when he crossed back over the other side of the Jordan? It was those who saw Elisha at Jericho and didn't want him to follow Elijah. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When you cross over and get what it is that God have you, you understand me? You're going to see them same people who have been hating on you. You're going to see them same old people. And guess what? They saw the spirit of Elijah resting on Elisha and it came to meet him. They had to bow down before him. Everyone that doubted you and said you were not going to be anything are going to have to acknowledge the anointing on your life. You know, this is the year where shifting is taking place. Our, your pain is going to qualify you for everything that you have received, that you're going to receive. Everything we went through has qualified us for the double portion. Everything, everything that everything that you've been through is going has qualified you for the double portion in the name of Jesus. And let the word of the Lord be blessed. Let the word of the Lord bless. And that's all. That's all I gotta say. Y'all have a blessed day. I'm gonna I'm gonna post this to YouTube. And it's going to go back on my Facebook page. So y'all be blessed. I'm on YouTube at Ramon Carter, comma, B-A, comma, M-A-C-S on YouTube. Under uh, Facebook, under uh, Ramon Carter. Y'all have a blessed day.